Hi, I'm Tanya O'Callaghan. I'm Derek Green. We are both international touring musicians with a mutual love for life on the road and all things food. We are stepping off the stage and taking to the streets to show you some amazing food and introduce you to many incredible guests. Highway to Health is a show where we will be combining great food, rock and roll, education, and a lot of laughs while seeking out the most exciting plant-based food on the planet, showing you just how easy it is to be powered by plants. Along the journey, we want to showcase how a plant-based lifestyle can be a route to improving not only the health of people, but also the health of the whole planet. We've got guests from all walks of life. Going to the most interesting places with the most interesting people. All joining us on our exciting adventure down what we are calling the Highway to Health. Really excited to be here with Tanya O'Callaghan and Derek Green for the Highway to Health segment for Future Food at South by Southwest. I'm Elise Burnell. I work on the investment side in food systems change, the private foundation and investment office. And I am so excited to be here chatting with you both. So welcome. Hey, <laughs> and thanks for having us. <laughs> thanks for being here. South by Southwest online. Yeah. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> 2021. <laughs> um, you guys are real like real life rock stars. Can you tell me a little bit about that? And Tanya, we'll start with you. Just where you're from, the bands you rock out with. <laughs> real it's life. Exciting to have you here. That. Yeah. It's really in real life. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I'm originally from Ireland, if that's not obvious enough with the O'Callaghan and the accents. Um, but yeah, I'm a freelance baser, so I've spent the past 10 or so years touring all over the world with a bunch of different bands. So I'm like a hired gun, per se. Uh, I play with Dee Snyder and Stephen Adler and then shows like the Riverdance and all sorts of different um, musical adventures over the past 10 years. <laughs> Amazing. And Derek, tell us about Sepultura. Uh, yeah, I've been the vocalist of Sepultura for the over 20 years. Um, the band is based out of Brazil. Uh, I joined the band many years ago and uh, we're still doing everything around the world, playing music and been quite an adventure. Um, but added on to the adventure is Highway to Health and this is something that's really exciting and we look forward to recording again. We've already recorded such a substantial amount of material already for the first season. Um, we have a lot of ideas for the second season and we can go into detail about what the show is about. I would love that. So mm -hmm. yeah, well, we'll start with you then. How did you become so passionate about food and uh, food's place on the highway to health? <laughs> well, I think with Tanya and I, we had many things in common and that's what drew us together to really develop this idea of Highway to Health. We're traveling musicians and a lot of people don't really understand and there are so many questions that are always being thrown at us about how we maintain ourselves on the road, how we're able to get protein. A lot of, I mean, just a lot of interesting questions that I would, but questions that are a little annoying at their time. And I think, <laughs> like, shouldn't there be a show about this, about, explaining plant-based lifestyle, how it is to mm -hmm. or how it is to adapt to a plant-based lifestyle, what options are out there, um, how is the, the entire field changing their future, um, and, you know, and answer all those questions that a lot of people might have who aren't plant-based. Mm -hmm. Totally. And it, exactly to their point and also just making it like fun and showing people that if if we can do it people who literally live on the road for months on end and live in like tour buses and you're in the you know places people can't even pronounce where you think it's going to be hard to be <laughs> and it's, it's actually really easy when it's just it's your way of life so showing using the show in that way that it's fun and it's so accessible because at the end of the day if we can do it anybody can do it <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Uh, and you you interview so many cool musicians on your show. See other musicians and celebrities really using their influence to start those conversations about healthier food, because you you really you really cross a lot of really amazing people, and it's amazing how you 
used your voice uh, to put the word out about this. I think that's right. important, right? Having a platform, um, ours and our, you know, our friends naturally because the industry we're in. Um, oh, sorry, there's a sphinx cat, by the way, like running around and cat sitting. So just to see what all the movement is. <laughs> um, so just using your your platform. I mean, what's the point in having one, right? With if you don't use it. So we, you know, our, our friends that are kind of in the more influencer category as much as I hate that word but uh, <laughs> you know just showing fans and followers you know what you're eating daily or like the simple things like what products you buy checking that they're not um tested on animals and whatnot because your people are watching when you have a social media following no matter how small or big it is they're watching and they they want to do better in in you know their day-to-day -day purchasing habits so I think it's wonderful when people use their influence like that and so far we've we've had a, a pretty crazy list and more to come in season two yeah who have been some of your favorite guests that you've had uh, on the show oh my god that's hard to say Derek you take that <laughs> <laughs> um actually for one of the episodes we decided to go to our hometowns um just Aww. so people idea of where we come from uh how we developed into the people that we are now <laughs> <laughs> so my hometown being Cleveland, we went there and there was an artist that had an impact musically um, as far as creating all the flyers for shows that were coming to town um, is where I discovered or actually my first interaction with this artist, Derek Hess. Mm -hmm. um, and to be uh, Tanya being a big fan of Derek, which I had no idea. Just Until small, the day of. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no way. No. Yeah, so it was <laughs> such a small world and, and, and a great connection, you know, that happened naturally. So mm -hmm. this is one of my favorite, um, one of the many favorite connections that we had that just happened naturally. No, so time. fun. You're right, though, doing our hometowns is so fun because, like, my 93 year old grandmother is also in it. But also, we have, you know, oh. Mo Moby and Kat and Kevin Smith. So we really like to cover because it's not, I mean, it's all well and good having celebrities and the big shiny names in there, but you want it to be applicable to everyday people in, you know, right. from small towns to big cities. So, yeah, it's, it's hard to say because we'd be biased to all of our guests. <laughs> of course, of course, but that's great that you got. To, I, I'm looking forward to that episode in Ireland mm -hmm. with your grandmother. Has to be. Yeah. <laughs> and Tanya, can I ask you how you became so passionate about plant-based food? Like, was there a, a moment, something that you saw, someone influential that kind of woke woke you up to? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. I, it was actually a cow when I was five. That woke me up so really? yeah 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 I grew up in a small town in Ireland and behind the house there was uh, fields full of cattle they weren't ours my, my family aren't farmers but we lived very close to a lot of farmers and as soon as I made the connection and my brother told me one day what was on the plate was Daisy who I thought was my pet cow and then I just wouldn't eat meat and I didn't like dairy anyway it tasted sour to me so it's been a lifelong journey for me and just you know it just gets bigger and bigger the mission and then when your career ends up kind of being a platform in itself it's like well why not use your platform for the mission and yeah I, I think the passion just gets stronger and stronger but yeah it's been a lifelong journey for me. Beautiful. How about you, Derek? How did you get so passionate about food? I think it started at the age of 14, 15. I started to really discover music and going to shows. And it happened through music, actually. Uh, there was a band called Promax, and lyrically, they had um, very powerful uh, lyrics that really spoke to me and imagery as well. And one of the members of the band, it's plant-based and he was using this platform as music to express his feelings about where he's coming from, um, social issues, things like that. So it was my first time experiencing, you know, the idea of becoming a, a vegan or vegetarian um, in my life um, on a level where I could really understand and investigate and go deeper. So after seeing the lyrics and the imagery of one image was a cow with the face of a human um, and the cow on the face of a human. So the cow was actually slaughtering the human. It was like a very strong image. Wow. It was 
of roles. And I, it made me really think about uh, what was going on in that industry. And then a lot of things came into play as far as reading different books, meeting different people. But it really sparked with music. Um, I think music is so powerful because it has that impact of uh, breaking barriers, no matter where you're from, uh, crossing borders, you know, crossing religions, crossing race. Um, it's just so open and pure music. It's so powerful. Excuse me. <coughs> Getting all choked up. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> honest. And so that was my first introduction and really wanting to explore what this whole world was about, this whole plant-based world. And it's just been growing and evolving since then. Um, and it, and, and I, it really captured my, my imagination at a very young age. And I'm so happy that uh, to see the evolution happening. Agreed. And that was beautiful. And it, it really makes me think of the word speciesism, um, which I'm sure you guys yeah. will get into in your show. Speciesists. But... <laughs> yeah. Um, well, being that the, the sessions are about future of food, what do you guys envision when you think of the ideal future of food? Tanya, maybe we'll start with you. Like, is it just like beyond burgers everywhere? Is it I don't know, more sweet everywhere. Burgers everywhere. Just walls of beyond burgers. Shout out to Ethan. Um, I mean, that's a, obviously a big question, but I, I, in a practical sense, I think for me, the word sustainability sticks out. And mm -hmm. like, by definition, if something's not sustainable, we just can't keep doing it. And what we're doing is not sustainable so we need to transition faster and faster and and I think the products like beyond and impossible are wonderful but they're also like you know they're 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 a transition food in a sense for a lot of people who have to make those steps for meat but I think it's just really important to get people more back in touch with nature and food possibly even like growing their own food understanding that it is not expensive I don't know where this mystery came from but there are vegetables in every grocery store everywhere in the world and grains and basic, you know, your oats, your nuts, your seeds. And I think that the future of food is getting people back in touch with food and how simple it is and stop complicating it. And like using all, you see all these incredible companies, which I'm sure you guys see at Future Food all the time, like vertical farming and you know using space differently and using water differently because we really have to put the brakes on with this planet or you know we're, we're, we're going a little too fast in the wrong way but at the same time like the exponential growth of these future food companies is is giving us all a lot of hope but I think just breaking it down and making food simple again and not so complicated and not like a diet or you know, it's just simple, whole foods, nourishing. Everyone can afford to be plant-based no matter where you are. You just have to switch your mindset a little. Love that. Yeah. Derek, do you vibe with that? Is there uh, anything else that you are excited to see in this future of food? I think Tanya encapsulated it pretty well. And Oh, absolutely. I think also that's extremely important and exciting to see is education-wise. I think that's mm -hmm the starting point for a lot of people to really encapture this idea in their mind. Um, I think the mentality of how people are approaching the future is extremely important to make people understand um, that how what they're doing does have an impact. Um, and that mentality starts at a very young age of getting people aware of what's going on and how they're interactive within our world today. So this is extremely important and great to see that a, a young age, people are starting to learn about what's happening around them, the impact that they have. And I think that's such an important starting point for the future is really creating this education for, for our, our, our kids and for future kids to really have an understanding about this planet and themselves in, on this planet. Mm -hmm. A hundred percent. I think that there are probably a lot of adults out there that could use a better education about what it is that they eat <laughs> several yeah. times a day. So thanks. <laughs> so thanks for bringing that up. And how powerful um, that is, your daily choices. You know, it's very simple. Yeah, you know, yeah. A couple of plant-free, or plant-free, do you hear me? <laughs> a couple of plant-based meals a week Burgers. does have a dramatic, yeah, just walls yeah. of <laughs> 
Oh yeah, it's you. The power is in the consumer. Agreed. So if you guys could be teleported to any place in the world for any meal, could be a restaurant or, you know, home cooked meal in somebody's house. What are you guys missing right now that you can't get uh, where you're at? When the world opens up, where would you want to be eating? And what, what would it be? Who wants to go first? <laughs> hmm, if I had a beard. <laughs> if I had a beard. And, um, <laughs> what popped into my head just now was deep dish Chicago style pizza. And I haven't had that vegan style. <laughs> oh, and I have. Oh, there's a place. It's awesome. I got to bring it. <laughs> all right. I would love to be teleported there. Season two. <laughs> Is this in <laughs> Chicago? Yes, I want that too. Can they deliver? Yeah. Can we get a drone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somewhere that has deep dish vegan pizza, I, I would love to be transported there. Okay, okay. That sounds like a good one. What about you, Tanya? I mean, the first memory food was a, a place in Bolivia when I was touring down there in La Paz, Bolivia. And it was so incredible because A, I was not expecting it in a very very poor city there was a, like a michelin level star vegan restaurant called i think it was ali Pacha or ali Pachi or something and it was like a mirage in this very very poor little city in bolivia and this five-star vegan restaurant it was one of the most insane meals i've ever had and we are definitely going there in season two because i gotta get awesome. that meal again and then obviously teleported home so i can eat with my family in ireland yeah. <laughs> Oh, that sounds amazing. Um, well, I will have to check that out. And um, I'd say for me, it would be the Green Bar Cafe in Manila, where they have this amazing jackfruit Ooh. burger. I'm like super into jackfruit recently. So um, that's <laughs> the one for me. <laughs> we were in Brazil, it was so, speaking of jackfruit, I, you know, because it, it, it's a relatively new trend in the vegan food scene. In Brazil, mm. as Derek knows well, because he lived there for 20 years, it's everywhere. They can't get rid of it. <laughs> wow. Jackfruit? Yeah. Have you yeah. ever put in the jackfruit? Have you ever what? Put your hand into a jackfruit? I can't oh, say you I don't. Have. You're not supposed to do that, right? You're supposed to handle jackfruit with care, like gloves, and it's this whole operation. Um, the whole operation is right. <laughs> And I'm not going to put my hand into a jackfruit anytime yeah, soon. Yeah, not recommended. Um, <laughs> well, you guys, I think we, we're going to be wrapping up, but I am so excited about Highway to Health. Can you tell us where we can get more information about the show oh. and uh, where we can check out or sign up for uh, an alert when the first episodes come out? We're like... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right now we're on a, a lot of the social media. So Instagram is really where we've been updating and keeping people informed. Um, and it's great that we have uh, the subscribers that we do or people are following. So the more the merrier, the better. Uh, we're trying to build that, that page. And um, just really on the, you know, that Facebook we are, are also on. And uh, if you stay in tune to those, we definitely are sending messages about updates or anything that's uh, going to be happening in the future. And plus oh, our amazing. Uh, YouTube. Coming, the, the hashtag coming soon movement, because we're coming, in. Coming soon. We're, 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 soon. we're in the frustrating part of like, we can't really say yet, but there's lots of announcements soon. So you have to just follow us and then you'll know. Very soon. Follow then us. We'll on. follow you. Exactly what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, we are super excited and, and thank you guys for coming on and talking to us about the highway to health. Health. Say that like you mean it at least. Highway to <laughs> highway to health. health. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Get it. Boom. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you, darling. Thank Happy you. South by Southwest. Namaste.